Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the channel. It's your boy, Moss Devour. Today's episode, I'm just going to get right into it. Today, we are going over the eight best classes to win more and kill more in Search and Destroy. I surveyed 20 players with a 2.0 KD or higher that also had a 4.0 or higher win loss and at least 30 days of playing time. That's over 720 hours logged in on the game of Modern Warfare. So all of these players are indefinitely top 10% in the world. They're not unbeatable. No one is unbeatable. I am not unbeatable. Marksman is not unbeatable. But these people and Marksman and myself do outperform the vast majority of the world the vast majority of the time. That being said, let's go ahead and hop right into it, guys. So killstreaks are up to you. I do recommend UAV, cruise missile, VTOL. If you watch any of my videos, you'll see why. The field upgrade, the only field upgrade you should be using is dead silence. If you use anything else, then it will slow down the recharge rate of dead silence most likely. And you're going to get the vast majority of your kills from dead silence, or it will influence the vast majority of your kills by allowing you to rush super hard at the start of the round. All right, so the MP5, no surprise, it is up first. It is the most used full class. Like it is what it is. All CDL pros all choose the MP5. Not half of them were using the MP7, not half of them were using the MP5. They were all using the MP5. The only reason they don't use the monolithic and takeover suppressor is just because it's GA'd. What you can change on this setup is you can definitely change the Merc foregrip out for the Ranger, or you can change the Ranger out for the Merc, or you can change the 45 round mag out for the 30 round mag. That's up to you. If you don't like the monolithic and takeover suppressor, you can go with the monolithic actual suppressor. But besides that, you wouldn't want to use anything else. You could use a compensator if you don't want to be stealthy. That's totally fine. I've seen a lot of people do that or a muzzle break as well. But um, for the most part, being able to be stealthy is a big addition. And you wouldn't want to use any of the other barrels on the MP5 because they all take away bullet velocity. You'll see this trend going on throughout all the weapon setups that we're about to go through today and 20 out of 20 people agree on this setup some of them some people use the 30 round mag some people use a merc foregrip that's about the only difference again you wouldn't want to use any of these other barrels because of the negative bullet velocity effect that it will have meaning it takes longer for your bullets to hit the target which is stupid you would never want that to be happening for your guns you don't ever want your bullets to take longer to hit that's like that sounds stupid coming out of my mouth, to be honest. And then with submachine guns, moving forward, I always use the Cali sticks. Just because it swaps quickly to submachine guns, it doesn't take that long. But if you're using an assault rifle or like an LMG or a sniper rifle, and you're using like sticks or knife, I would go with the knife if you're using a larger rifle because it'll swap quicker. And you'll notice the swap speed definitely a lot more between a knife and a Cali stick. But again, submachine gun, I would definitely go with the Cali sticks. And then my lethals normally stay the same, like frags or semtex. Moving right along, this is my specialist setup. So I have the same exact perk setup, double time, hard line, and tune up. My very first kill, I end up getting shrapnel. At my third kill, I get ghost. At my fifth kill, I get EOD. Again, I love shrapnel. I think a lot of people love to use shrapnel as well, just because it's, it's more fun than tune up. Shrapnel is way more fun. It's so much fun to throw spawn nades and maybe get like one or two spawn nade kills a game. But you know what's way more practical is getting 12 kills while in dead silence. That's way more practical than getting 12 kills from shrapnel. It just doesn't happen. It might happen for you maybe one game and then you're praying for that game to happen again. But it is what it is. Tune up is undoubtedly going to be the best third perk to run. Shrapnel is just the funnest. So again, sometimes you got to sacrifice having fun for being a little sweaty kid. That's what you got to do. Shit. So on the shotgun. Shrapnel is really good if you're using a shotgun or you're using a class where you plan on not running a lot. Sometimes I'll use double time on my shotgun if it's like Condor hideout and you just need to rush one power position really hard. But majority of the time, it's probably like Claymores, Shrapnel, EOD, and Ghost on your shotgun. On the 725, we're running the sawed off barrel. I've definitely seen other people use like the, the 32 inch competition barrel, but up to you. The 5MW laser helps out a lot because it's that sprint to fire speed. The shotgun is all about like being able to pull up first and shoot first. The sawed off stock, movement speed, aim down sight speed. Sleight of hand, you only have two bullets. It is what it is. Most times you kill a person, you gotta reload right away to kill the next person. And the Tempest slim grip helps out a lot. Aim down sight speed and sprint to fire speed. I see some people using under barrels sometimes on the shotgun. You don't need that. The recoil, it's, it's two shots guys. Like literally you point it at a person, they die. Hopping right into the M4 setup. This is the CDL setup. Again, so the vast majority of people did vote on this one. 
there is uh, another setup that I'll show you as well, but pretty much everyone wanted the Compensator on the M4. 12 out of 20 people wanted the Corvus Custom Marksman. I like to use the Grenadier Barrel, but um, as long as you're using the Custom, the Corvus Custom or the stock Grenadier and not any of the other barrels, then you're really good. The reason why you wouldn't want to use any of the other ones is because they, again, take away bullet velocity. Making your bullets take longer to hit, again, that's a stupid, stupid, stupid decision. Forge Tax CQS. Aim down sight speed, pretty basic. If it's a smaller map, you could definitely get away with using the no stock, but the Forge Tax CQS in combination with the stippled grip tape gives you really good ADS speed, so you really wouldn't need it. The only thing is with this M4 setup, you can't have a sight on it. If you're a person that really needs a sight, then you do probably have to go with the no stock and take away stippled and put in the sight. But again, so Forge Tax CQS, stippled grip tape, and then the final attachment is going to be the Commando foregrip as well. And then this is like the other half of the voting. Again, for all of these setups, I'm just showing what the majority of the vote was. First, we voted on the weapons, and then we voted on the setups of the weapons. And then whatever was in the majority of the setup of the weapon, that's what I'm showing you guys first. This is my personal M4 setup, and this was like the second smaller half, the minority of the 20. This was like 8 out of 20. That went with the stock Grenadier and no stock for the stock, and they wanted a sight on their M4 somehow. Okay, moving right along. Again, assault rifle, we're gonna go with a knife. So our second assault rifle on this list is going to be the AMAX guys. I don't agree with this one, but you know what? They all agreed on it. This was like literally 19 out of 20. So I just, whatever, this is the setup apparently. Monolithic suppressor, sound suppression, and damage range. The barrel, everyone, again, agrees on this one because the other two do take away bullet velocity. Again, same formula. XRK, Zodiac, the CR56 XO. Some people went with no stock, but the vast majority went with the CR56 XO. The XRK56 stippled wrap, no surprise there. So we got two ADS attachments and the commando foregrip, giving recoil stabilization and aiming stability. You could go... What I do, what I prefer is like I run a compensator with this setup, but again, 19 out of 20 wanted the monolithic suppressor, so I guess I'm gonna have to start using the monolithic suppressor. But this AMAX setup, definitely, I can I can definitely see it like melting kids. I've melted a lot of kids with the compensator, so yeah. You could also rock no stock if you're like really good at controlling recoil. I know some PC players are just like super good at controlling recoil. So I think it might depend on like what you're playing on, whether it's controller or PC. But um, yeah, if you want no recoil to have to control pretty much, then using the XO stock is probably going to be the best bet. And again, screwdriver, whatever, small attachment. So we got the Uzi up next, guys. Again, another one I don't agree with, but <laughs> the vast majority of people voted on this one. This was a 17 out of 20. So the monolithic suppressor, the FSS Carbine Pro. If you have it unlocked on the base Uzi variant, where there's no variant on the Uzi, excuse me, the base Uzi has the best iron sights. You don't want to use a variant on it. For me, I only have it unlocked on the Glacial Polish, so I have to use the Glacial Polish. And 10 people went with the no stock, 10 people went with the close quarter stock. I think there's no difference in the ADS speed. There would just be a little bit of difference in movement speed, so totally up to you on that one. And everybody wanted the 32 AE round mags as well. That's a 20 out of 20. And then 15 people went, the, went with the Merc foregrip. And five people went with the Ranger foregrip. Again, I think that's all personal preference. I think both of the foregrips, either or, are both really good. Ranger gives you like really low aiming stability, which helps me out a lot. But Merc foregrip is a little bit better for um hip fire so up to you if you were curious about my own personal uzi class that i've dropped multiple 20 kill games with already i use the compensator and i use a gi mini reflex and then i don't use a, a foregrip to be honest because the compensator controls recoil the best then i don't need a foregrip and because i don't have a foregrip on there like my ads speed isn't affected too much this is my personal setup but yeah no one voted for this unfortunately it is what it is <laughs> okay moving right along guys let's get it and our gun next up is going to be without a doubt probably the new meta i know you've seen it probably on handler's channel it says new meta you probably saw it on marksman's channel it says uh super sweaty or whatever but yeah a lot of people are using the as val now because it has a super short time to kill so you only need to land like two or three bullets and those two or three bullets shoot super fast and the fact that it's always suppressed is amazing as well 
So again, the barrel, we're going with the same exact thought process. The only barrel that you can use is going to be the Osa, which is the final barrel on the AS Val. So you do have to level this gun up a little bit in order to get it to like a good usable state. The other two barrels both take away bullet velocity. So it would be completely and utterly stupid to use either of these other barrels. Like I wouldn't, like if you don't have the third barrel unlocked for some reason, or you don't have the variant, then just don't use a barrel on the gun. Wait until you get the Osa, and then the Osa, you'll see it will get a lot better. Moving right along, again, every attachment on this gun is actually 20 out of 20, and I vote for this setup as well as myself. So we got the Skelet, the third stock. I don't even know how to like pronounce it. I see a lot of people using the Strelok for some reason, or like the first stock. It, like it, honestly, it's unneeded. Maybe with the the 10 round mags, it would it would be good. But if you're using the AS Val properly now, you're using the 30 round mags. It's pretty much the only choice so definitely the third stock is where you're going to be wanting to go the second stock if it's the only one you have unlocked would be good as well but um the third stock the skelet stippled grip tape again ads speed and sprint to fire speed this in combination with the stock gives this gun really good mobility so that's point blank the 30 round mags just because the as val only comes with 20 rounds so it kind of sucks it's really hard to get three kills with just 20 bullets if you can manage to do that consistently, then I guess just keep using the 20 round mags. But the 30 round mags does help out a lot. I think it makes it a lot easier to use this weapon. And then you can miss at least like four or five bullets out of 30 at least. And the Ranger foregrip. Again, this is a 20 out of 20 situation. It controls recoil and aiming stability. With the barrel on this AS Val, it makes the recoil really easy to control, which is important because this gun shoots super fast. So you need to be constantly accurate. You can't be getting you can't be getting accurate as the gunfight goes on. You need to be accurate at the start. That's how you're using this gun to its maximum potential. Definitely a sexy looking gun. It'll be fun to come back to Modern Warfare in a year from now and see if the AS Val is still alive and kicking. So for a counter sniper class, 10 people prefer the SPR, 10 people prefer the HDR. For time's sake, I'm just gonna go over the HDR. The SPR is like godly no matter what you do to it, like unfortunately. Um, so on the HDR, I like to use the monolithic suppressor instead of using a barrel because you don't need a barrel to increase the damage range because the HDR's damage range is already ridiculous. So putting on the 26.9 inch, like you can either do that or have the monolithic suppressor. They both increase damage range, but if you pick the monolithic suppressor, then you're suppressed, you're off the radar. So it has that added bonus. Tactical laser, it's obvious. Anytime you're using a sniper rifle, you pretty much have to use a tac laser. The stock that gives the ADS speed, the F tac stalker scout, it is what it is. Um, for the perk, I like to use presence of mind. Again, I only pull this out if I'm counter sniping someone. So if you're counter sniping someone, most likely you're trying to beat them to a certain position and you're gonna hold that snipe angle and you're going to shoot the sniper before they shoot. And the bipod just because we have an extra attachment and it doesn't have any cons to it. So if you do happen to be ducking or proning, you have a little bit better recoil control. Why is this not colored? Why are you not colored? There we go, now it looks sexy. And then the way that I like to use my counter sniper setup is I always use specialists with it. So I'll use overkill with my MP5 setup that we are already using from before. Again, you can use the 30 round mag or the 45 round mag. Ranger or Merc foregrip up to you on that MP5. But the perks I think are really important because anytime you're using overkill, you do want to be using amped. So it takes away our bread and butter of tune up. So I like to use specialist with overkill. That way I get tune up at two kills. This way, when you are swapped to your submachine gun or shotgun, whatever you might prefer as your overkill with your sniper, then you're going to be able to rush in with dead silence when you need to be able to rush in with it. Because quite frankly, you're not going to be able to handle everything with the sniper most likely unless your name is you know face kitty my, my mans can handle anything with a sniper so up to you and then these were the other two classes i just messed around with the other couple days it was a striker and a fennec i normally keep the bottom two classes open just for messing around with i do apologize i skipped over this earlier but we also have the mp7 class guys as you can see by the values on the screen this was a pretty easy one as well the only difference we had in was the under barrel and the ammunition which we will get to very shortly so for the muzzle, monolithic suppressor, damage range, real easy. FSS recon, again, this one gives the most damage range and the most bullet velocity and recoil control. No stock, again, everybody went no stock on this one. I think everyone went no stock on this one. It was really easy because the MP7 has such a low recoil pattern 
and it's very reliable so no stock is like doesn't really affect like the recoil pattern that's why no stock is the best any 50 round drum some people went with the 60 i think 50 or 60 are both fine either or and then 17 people went with the merc foregrip three people went with the ranger foregrip i think either or is amazing as well I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you guys do enjoy these type of videos, I will be posting these videos on Cold War as well from time to time. It does take extra long. So if you are not subscribed, please do make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you have not already, please do make sure to leave a like on the video as well. GG's guys. Devour out.